Welcome to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That starts with chocolate bars being made and five golden things being placed into them at random and sent off to random locations. And the narrator introducing us to Moist Critical, who lives with this family that is not rich, not powerful, has no connections, has no bitches, but as far as I can tell, is the only family with their own house and own land. Otherwise, they're probably stricken. He lives in a crooked house with all his grandparents, who have been bedridden for years, presumably, and his mom and dad. His mom is a stay at home mom who doesn't know how to chop food properly. Curl your fingers or you'll lose them. God damn it. Gordon Ramsay would be ashamed. Anyway, dad has a shitty low paying job that has him capping off toothpaste tubes, and he brings back deformed toothpaste caps to give to Charlie so he can play with and using that stuff he builds a small cock shit factory out of them however most of them are undeformed caps which means that his dad was stealing from his job but that doesn't matter because this triggers grandpa for rice to talk about how he used to work for Willy Wonka when he first started making candy witnessing all his crazy impossible creations like making life out of candy and making a whole chocolate palace all things I will not comment on because some of the characters already comment on how impossible and batshit crazy these things are and it's in Tim Burton movie so it's pointless still gonna comment on other shit though so far as was working for him when the factory was first built but then lots of competitor candy makers started sending in spies to see Willie's secret recipes to make their own super cool, weird ass, impossible candy. So Willie simply fired every single person there and closed the factory down forever. Till forever ended and he opened it up again recently, but hired absolutely no one apart from delivery drivers, I guess. But nobody and nothing comes in or out of that factory except for candy. And Four Eyes is like, I'd give anything to go back into that marvelous chocolate factory to see what's become of it. But other grandpa who's kind of bitter and old is like, but you can't and you won't. And his wife, who's got a faulty fuse in her brain because he's an old, dementia, insane person, hugs Charlie before bed and goes, Nothing impossible, Charlie. Then he goes to sleep upstairs under a hole in the roof how is he not freezing to death how are they all not freezing to death how are they all not dead because of the structurally unsound fucked house it hasn't collapsed on them yet I guess it's held up by tim burtonisms as well whatever that night things were set into motion by mr wonka he sent people out i'm guessing the truck drivers on bikes to go hang out leaflets for everyone to read tomorrow that say that he hid five golden tickets in five random chocolate bars of his for five kids to find whoever finds them gets invited to a tour of his factory and one of these kids will get a special big prize and that sends everyone into a chocolate buying frenzy and presumably wonka stock through the fucking roof charlie begins to imagine what it'd be like to get one of those bars and and find the golden ticket but the only problem is he only gets one a year on his birthday which is next week and the bitter grandpa's like you've got no chance only people who can afford to buy a ton of this stuff do mark my words the first person to find a ticket is going to be a fat fuck that's my type of guy right there that's basically me when i grow old Damn, is that my future? Holy shit. Anyway, just like Grandpa Highboy predicted, the first one to find the ticket was a fat <coughs> from Dusseldorf, Germany, yeah? They see his interview on TV and they're like, what a repulsive fat shit. They basically bully every single winner they see on TV, which is great, I love it. And the next winner is from Buckinghamshire, England. She's a kid with a silver spoon stuck straight up her ass, who forced her spineless, super duper rich dad to divert all his factory workers to opening up tons of chocolate he bought so he could find one golden ticket for her. And when one of his workers finally found it and tried to steal it, he just happened to be standing right next to her to take it out of her hand and stop her from doing this. The luck involved in that is fucking mind boggling but whatever. The grandparents see this on TV and they're like spoiled little hole. Then the parents come in to surprise Charlie with his birthday gift one week early and they sit down to open his one yearly bar of chocolate. The hype is unreal. It's like FIFA pack openings all over again. They open it and sadly it's just chocolate and Charlie hits us with a solid it is what it is and shares the chocolate among his family. One of his grandmas sniffs it like crack and his dad eats his portion like this. Who the fuck eats chocolate like this? Do you have front teeth bro? Are they too sensitive or something? Doesn't matter. Third kid to find a ticket is a hyper competitive bubblegum chewing little bitch. They diss her on TV. Then the fourth kid who only bought one bar of candy and found the ticket immediately because he cracked the chocolate distribution code with some bullshit made up math homie said he didn't even taste the chocolate because he hates chocolate so grandpa Hybo rips into this one especially hard like well it's a good thing you're going to a chocolate factory you ungrateful little fa- <laughs> Then later his dad gets let go from his job because they modernized or machinized, I forgot what the word is, but you understand, they got a robot to replace what he does, which blows, and the situation is super fucking dire. But Four Eyes gives Charlie his entire life savings to buy one more candy bar for one more shot at the golden ticket. So the kid runs off to buy a candy bar while the grandpa shuts his eyes and dies in his sleep, only for the sight of a chocolate bar to resuscitate and breathe life back into him. The hype builds up again for another CSGO skin opening, but no luck again, no ticket. Later on, the kids wander around town doing kid shit when he stumbles upon 10 whole units of their national currency, then goes into a store to buy one more chocolate bar for one more shot. Does the store clerk not give him any change back? Does the chocolate bar cost a whole tenner? Do they have coins that are worth a whole tenner? Where the fuck does this movie take place? Apparently no one knows. And it's confusing as fuck to find out because they got British and American accents, Russian and Swedish cars, Dutch bikes, in what looks like a fringe super depressed Siberian mining town. But whatever, that doesn't matter because he opens a chocolate bar and third time lucky he finds the golden ticket inside of it. KSI fucking loses his mind because the kid won a ticket and the white people try to buy it off of him but KSI, good guy, tells him to run back home with the ticket as fast as he can so he does that. Shows the ticket to his grandpa, he sees it and he springs out of bed wait a fucking minute either that ticket has magical healing powers that fix his eyesight and cured his muscle atrophy from years of not moving or this motherfucker was faking being too tired and old to work and making his family suffer when he was able-bodied enough to help out anyway they read the ticket and it says that they're able to take one member of the family along with them to watch over them on the first of february on a tour of the factory and when they leave they'll be gifted with truckloads of candy and one of them will be gifted with an even bigger gift and they decide to send grandpa four eyes along with them yippee okay charlie brush your teeth wash your face wipe your ass and rub one out for post not clarity
hesitate, but Charlie thinks that they can sell the ticket for money because they really need it more than the chocolate. But since on the way over here, Omen offered him $500 in exchange for the ticket and he thinks they can get more. But then Grandpa High was like, honey, a little donkey. He goes over, Grandpa High was like, there's plenty of money out there. They print more of it every day. It's called hyperinflation. I figured it out, guys. The search is over. Fear not. I know where this takes place. This one we set in 2008 Zimbabwe. Mystery solved. So he continues like, money come, money go. But the experience of the golden ticket is forever. Only a fucking moron would pass that up. Are you a fucking moron? No, sir. boy. Now go plug one out like he said. All the winners line up in front of the factory next day and Willy Wonka lets them in, greets them with a flaming and autonic show and tries to speak to them but he's a social retard that hasn't spoken to anybody in years so he defaults back to every programmer's first line of code like hello world then lets him in the factory. All the kids start trying to suck his dick to get closer to that big special prize. I mean that figuratively of course. They're trying to suck up to him and get closer to the prize. Kiss his ass basically. Somehow that's a more appropriate phrasing for this. Violet starts hugging him like Mr. Wonka. I'm Violet Beauregard. I'm Veruca Salt. I'm Augustush and I love your chocolate. But Willy's just like don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. I don't. He then has a small aneurysm while trying to say the word parents. Before they move along with the tour, Augustus lets out the sneeze slapper of a joke. Would you like some chocolate? Sure. Then you should have bought some. Behold everyone, you've just witnessed peak German humor. He then unlocks a super small door that doesn't actually have a keyhole and opens like a big door, making the fact that you have to unlock it by bending down completely retarded and stupid, but it's a Tim Burns or whatever. They get into this magical room where everything they see is edible, not eatable, it's pronounced edible, okay? You're one to talk. Shut up, my video. With a flowing river of melted chocolate, he tells everyone to go enjoy the delectables. Mike TV goes to be a destructive brat while Violet calls Charlie a loser and hides her gum at the back of her neck to continue chewing it later. That, my dear dumb child, is a perfect way to get gum stuck in your hair. Also, shouldn't he have told them to take their shoes off before they entered a room where literally everything inside they can eat and are probably stepping over shit that they want to eat or at least put some baggies on their feet. Doesn't matter, fat boys being a gluttonous cow when the rest of them spot their first sighting of the hardworking factory workers that are essentially miniature clones of the same old random Indian dude. But in this movie, they're called Oompa Loompas who are voluntary slave workers to Willy Wonka because he pays them on cocoa beans that are very sought after by them. He got them from Oompa Land, which doesn't actually exist, but whatever, Timburnism. Also, the Oompa Loompas like to make fun of people dying. Lul. Then fat boys started trying out some of the chocolate river and Willy says, Hey little boy, my chocolate must be untouched by human hands, but you just said to enjoy. By extension of the vagueness of that statement, that means everything. Enjoy everything. Now, you could have said enjoy everything apart from the chocolate river, but you didn't. That's on you, Willy. The kid drops to the chalky, he can't swim, and then a tube comes along to suck out some chocolate sent to a room to make some chocolate bars, and then it accidentally sucks him up as well. He gets stuck in the middle of the tube, and Oompa Loompa starts singing a song about how fat this motherfucker is and bullying him, talking about how he's gonna get boiled alive and shit. And also, their skin and clothes, for some reason, are chocolate hydrophobic, unlike Augustus's, which doesn't make sense, but whatever. The tube puts his back into it and sucks him up, takes him away to the chocolate making room, and if it sucked more chocolate up like that, covering him inside, so we can't see him. He should have died on the way via chocolate drowning, but whatever. Willie sends off the mom of one of the Oompa Loompas to the room where he's supposed to get boiled alive before he gets boiled alive to poke a stick in the bowl where he's gonna end up it and find him. And everyone's like, that sounded rehearsed, like Willie planned for this to happen or some shit. And he's like, it's called improv. Also, still don't care. They keep moving and get into a boat, and the dude gets a flashback of a childhood where he was out trick or treating as a KKK member, and his dentist father burnt all his Halloween candy hall because he doesn't want him to destroy his teeth. And then we snap back to reality. Huge Tim Burtonisms coming in. They go down a tunnel and end up having some amusement park fun, then go by a series of very important rooms according to Willy Wonka and hop off at the inventing room. He shows them experimental candies, some finished like the long lasting gobstopper and some not so finished like hair toffee that grows your hair on the top of your head and they missed out on the opportunity of making a joke about Mike's pedo dad with a comb over covering his bald spot but that's okay the thing grows away too much hair. And lastly this stick of gum that is a full course meal that has a problem which gives you drastic side effects when you hit the very last meal that is blueberry flavored. The annoying blonde bitch however does not care and takes it to chew it against all the advice and orders of the grown ups not to because I'm a champion gum chewer I can do whatever. She chews, hits all the flavors and when she gets the blueberry pot, she starts turning blue from her nose and after that she starts swelling and ballooning up into a giant blueberry and at no point during her literal physical deformations does she actually heed anybody's advice and spit out the piece of shit gum. Anyway, the Chupa Dupa Lupas come out to make fun of her, sing a song and dance about her. Then Wonka sends off her mom and the child to go squeeze the shit out of her kid to get all the juice out and make her normal again. They keep moving on foot now because the boat is being used to transport the big blueberry bitch. It's a good thing to see that there's another way to access these rooms though. He gets another childhood flashback of him trying candy behind his father's back and raiding them. Then they go into the nut sorting room which is made up of a bunch of squirrels are sorting and cracking open walnuts. Ain't that a bit unhygienic? Like, do health inspectors come in here? I'm sure that's health codes for factories that make food, right? No, no one comes in or out except for candy. That's what they said, right? And how the fuck does he, how does he legally operate this shit and sell his stuff? Doesn't matter, I'm overthinking this. The squirrels sort the nuts and throw the bad ones into this hole. So they see that and Rich Bitch is like, Daddy, I want a squirrel. So he asks Willy Wonka to buy one, but Willy Wonka tells him that they're not for sale. She can't have one. So she's like, Daddy. But he can't do anything. So she decides to go get one herself and slips through the gate, walks through the nut sorting place, and all the squirrels look at her like, Who there? What's going on? Steve, and look, seeing check things it out. again. We see it too, Jensen. Huh? Holy shit, watch out, Nicholas. She's coming away. Don't you dare come near me, bitch. I want to kill a seagull with a fucking hot dog. That Wonka dude's been feeding us nothing but LSD and Gatorade, bitch. You touch me, and so help me, God, woman. Hell hath no fury like squirrels do
Attack! The squirrels attack while the dad asks Willy Wonka to open the tiny gate. Nikki's fumbling around with the keys while the squirrels go pin her down to check if she's a bad nut like. Now let's see. Knock knock. Yep, nothing in there. She's rotten. Move out, boys! Hoo they throw her down the garbage chute, which leads to the incinerator, and only after that happens does Wonka find the key to open the gate for the father. That gate is no obstacle for a grown ass man. You can totally hop over it. The father is a retard. All the parents are retarded. The mom of the fat kid didn't even ask Willie to stop the suck machine or try and jump into the drink to save her son. Blondie's mom didn't forcibly try to take the fucking gum out of her kid's mouth like a dog that is chewing something he's not supposed to. And they all just stood idly by enjoying the show. Also, they should have feared for their children after the first guy got fucked. Definitely after the second. You know what they say. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me Twice shame on poo. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Whatever. Let's keep going. Thankfully, the incinerator is not working that day, and all that has to do is go after her, find her, and get her out. And while he steps in the ring, the Oompa Loompas come out to do the usual thing, sing and dance, while they throw some trash and perfectly good food down the chute. And a uh, squirrel kicks the father inside. They keep moving with the tour, get into a glass elevator that goes up, down, sideways, slantways, every single way, not just up and down. And pass by a lot of nonsensical magical rooms that I'm not going to comment on. I'm just going to enjoy the spectacle. Another flashback happens of him running away from home and his dad saying that when he comes back, he won't be here. So he runs away for like a couple of hours or some shit, and then he comes back and finds that the house is completely gone. The dude detached it from the fucking block and air lifted it out. What the penis swaddling shit was that? Whatever. While in the firework artillery room, Mike wants to choose a room himself, so he picks the television room, and they start redirecting to make their way over there. And the one thing I will comment on in this sequence is the complete and utter disregard for the laws of physics and inertia that are clearly present because, for one, when the boat started moving in the chocolate river, Willie jolted backwards suddenly when it started moving, but he is completely unaffected from all the fucking very abrupt motions of this elevator. Another thing is they keep reusing the shot of them slamming into the glass when the abrupt motion of the elevator takes place. Also, the last time it took place, they started moving forward and they slammed forward into the glass shouldn't happen they should trip backwards but whatever it doesn't matter they get to the television room where he had the idea to send chocolate through the tv so anybody could reach into the tv and grab a chocolate bar and have one and i'm not gonna rip into him for why and how that's impossible because the kid already does that for me they bring in a huge chocolate bar to do a demonstration it has to be big to make up for the fact that it's gonna be extremely tiny on the tv which is a huge waste but Willy Wonka logic whatever he presses the button it gets zapped away and they flip the channel to 2001 a space odyssey and the chocolate bar replaces the monolith that's there charlie reaches in and takes it out it takes a bite it's actually weird works and Mike TV gets mad at Willy Wonka for inventing fucking teleportation and using it on freaking candy then runs over to the machine presses the button and stands inside the machine itself so he gets zapped away into the TV the parent does the usual shit job of stopping his child from doing the stupid thing and he gets sent to the TV Oop -oop -oop starts singing in the channels about his stupidity and making fun of him as usual then the dad reaches in and takes him out as a tiny little piece of shit human and he gets taken away by a midget Hindu guy to go stretch his son out in a taffy stretcher to make him normal size again by the way on that channel where the Oompa Loompa gets into the shower with Mike he looks directly up unless the Oompa Loompa was wearing a baby suit, that kid looked directly at his dick and balls. Don't look at me, this is the movie that did it, I'm just pointing it out. Anyway, Wonka realizes that Charlie's the only one left, so by default he wins, he congratulates him, and they get into the elevator to shoot out of the tallest chimney, and it turns into a rocket power elevator, more laws of physics are ignored, they fly past all the kids leaving the factory, Augustus is covered in chocolate, either that or he has somehow morphed into a part chocolate himself, Blue Girl is still blue but back to normal size with extreme flexibility, rich kids are now covered in garbage, and Mike is now 2D and very tall. They go over to Charlie's house, and cause Will Wonka's a dick, just like his name implies, they crash land inside the house. Come on, that has to be the last straw that topples over this completely fucked house. There's no way it's still standing, whatever. Will explains that he's gonna give Charlie his whole factory, because one day he figured out that he's getting old and he needs an heir to give him all the shit when he dies. So he made this whole golden ticket shit and invited five kids to the factory and decided to give the factory to the least one child and Charlie's that winner, so he doesn't take him over and be his partner now and give him the thing when he dies. And Penguin Zero asks him if he can take his family with, but Wonka's like, of course not. So Charlie refuses to come, because he's watched enough Fast and Furious movies to know how important family is. I know I've used a version of that joke multiple times before, and no, I don't think it's getting old. Bite me. Willie leaves surprised as fuck that the kid refused such an offer and he's kind of sad and disappointed by that. Then the Buckets family luck starts turning around. They don't sue Willie Wonka for damaging their house and fix the roof themselves. I wonder if they ever got the truckloads of chocolate they were promised and profit off of them by selling them. I wonder if anybody got the truckloads of chocolate. Doesn't matter. The kid's dad gets a better job fixing the machine the toothpaste company got to replace him. Four Rise is way more active in helping around the house. But Willie is in a slump. His chocolates and candy ideas aren't selling that good. So he goes to therapy and figures out the reason that he's making shit inventions and candy ideas is because he feels like shit. So he goes and seeks out Charlie in the street and asks him what makes him feel better when he feels like shit and he tells him that Dominic Toretto makes him feel better. Family makes him feel better. Wonka's like ill. So Charlie offers to go visit Wonka's dad with him because he's too pussy to do it alone. And I don't know how they found it, but they take the rocket elevator to go to the hill that his dad fucking airlifted his house over to. They go in for a tooth checkup where there are newspaper clippings of Willy Wonka's achievements throughout the years, obviously meaning that his dad is proud of him. And the dude recognizes his son through inspecting his teeth. They embrace and make up, I guess. Willie makes the same offer to Charlie again, who accepts on the condition that his family comes with. So they transport the whole fucking house into the factory. Charlie now working with him and I'm guessing becoming an insanely rich multimillionaire via osmosis. They sit down to have dinner. Wonka's now basically part of the family with the insane grandma telling him, you smell like penis. And you smell like experimental medication that's in IV bags and they all live happily ever after. This movie gets 58 Snickers bars out of 60 Reese's cups.